it's Stacey and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make these super cute bunny ear treat bags. Now I'm going to show you how to make them in size medium but if you pop over to my website I'll put a link down below I'll show you how to make them in small medium and large. So let's get sewing. To make a bunny ear treat bag you're going to need two pieces of fabric at 8 inches by 24 inches and I like to use quilting cotton. You'll also need a piece of ribbon, some treats to go inside your bag, a sewing machine, point turner, pins, scissors, rotary cutter, ruler, mat and pencil. And the finished size is 9 inches by 4.5 inches and that's standing tall but the bag for the treats will be approximately 4 inches by 4.5 inches. So I've got my two fabrics here and I've folded them in half. And now you might actually find it easier to cut your fabric with it folded and then you'd measure it 8 inches wide and 12 inches tall which will then still give you your 8 inches by 24 inches. Now I'm going to take my lining fabric because then we won't see any markings that I'm going to do but what we need to do is because this is the medium size bunny ears we're going to measure 5.5 inches down and then we need to find the center so if it's 8 inches wide the center is 4 inches. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to find 4 inches on my ruler I'll just check that 1, 2, 3, 4 that's correct and then we want to go 5.5 inches down so I'll just bring this up find the 5.5 inch mark on my ruler line that up on the top edge line it up on this edge as well so it's nice and straight and then I'm just going to do a little dot so that is once again five and a half inches down and it's four inches in on both sides because it's right smack bang in the middle then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line from the dot up to the top corner but I want to leave about a quarter of an inch so we don't end up with a really tiny little slither up the top there and it does help us nest our seams when we're sewing it. So just by eye I'm gonna, I, I could mark it right now just about a quarter inch in and then I'm going to pop my pencil on that dot there and then draw a line all the way up to the quarter inch mark that I just did and then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. I'm going to come from the edge and go over to about quarter of an inch, mark it, take my ruler and start at that dot, line it up with the dot at the top and when I'm happy they are lined up, draw my line. Okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to place the two pieces of fabric on top of each other and we just want to make sure all those edges are lined up nicely on all four sides and then I'm just going to take my pins and just pop a few in to help keep the fabric in place. Oh, it looks like that's not quite lined up there, so I will just fix that up. Okay, that looks better. So then with fabric scissors we're just going to cut along that line we drew and we're now cutting through all four layers so I'm just going to turn it around so it's facing me and then I'm just going to carefully cut along that line. Okay so now that we've got our shape let's remove those pins and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the lining, now it doesn't matter which way my fabric's facing because it doesn't have a right or a wrong side, but if yours does, uh, face it so that the right sides are facing each other, so they'll be facing the, the right sides would be facing each other, and then we just want to mark a little opening on the side here, so about four inches from the bottom, let's mark four inches and then let's mark seven inches, which is giving us a three and a half inch opening. So what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing at the top here. So down to our first mark, stop, start sewing again at the second mark, down to the very bottom. I will pop some pins in just to keep it in place. I just think they do help keeping everything all lined up. You can use as many or if you don't want to use pins, don't worry about them. But I do find it helps. Now we only have to mark an opening on one side on one of the pieces. So for the rest 
I'm going to flip that over because we'll be sewing it along on this side. I will pop a few more pins in. And then I'll take my second piece. Now again, we want that right sides together. We could have actually cut it right sides together if you'd prefer that. It really doesn't matter. But I am just turning it around so now my right sides are facing each other. And because that little dot we drew was right smack bang, right smack bang in the center, it's just turned over really nicely there. So again, I will just pop some pins in, making sure those edges are all lined up nicely. And we don't have to worry about an opening on our outer fabric. Okay, let's move on to sewing. So starting on the sides where we marked our openings, now I've got my quarter inch foot on and I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5. I'm using glide thread and I have checked that my sewing machine is stitching nicely. I'm gonna start at the very edge. I'm not gonna worry about a back stitch and then I'll just stitch down to that first mark we did. So when I get to the marker, we'll do a back stitch because we're turning it right sides out. It does tend to pull at the stitches, so a back stitch is always a good idea. Okay, I'm cutting our thread. Remove that pin, and now I'm going to move down. Oop, now I'm going to move down to that second mark that we did, and I'll start right on top of it. Doesn't have to be exact. I'll go forward a few stitches, back a few stitches, and then carry on right to the very end. I'm going to just come right off the edge and I'm not worrying about a back stitch. Cutting my thread and now I'll turn it around um, and do this side and we don't have to worry about an opening so I'll just start at the very top, go right down to the very bottom and then I'll do exactly the same for our second piece. Okay, now let's box off our corners. So now we're going to work on all four corners of our folded edge here. So what I'm going to do is open up the two pieces and we want to create kind of a square on the bottom. Can you see how by opening that up and pulling at it, it's created a square there? Then I'm just going to flip it over and find my corner here with the seam and I'm going to place my ruler on top and I want to measure from the very point here to one and a half inches so I'm going to put my ruler on top I'm going to find one and a half inches because that always helps there we go so that's one inch and a half I'm going to line it up there and you can also place a diagonal on your fold just to make sure it's straight so at about one and a half okay so I can see that that's one and a half exactly on my ruler and that diagonal line is actually lined up with that fold and then I'm just going to draw a line and we're going to sew along that line. I will pop a pin in just to keep it in place just while I'm doing all the markings you might find it easier to take that out when we get to sewing actually I think if I turn the pin around it will be easier. Then what I'm going to do is flip it over and find the other corner So actually I just fixed that but I should have told you what I was doing. I can see that the corner here is not correct. I, it's all folded here. I want it all opened out. I don't want it folded in like that. So making sure that it's all nicely pushed out. Then I'll measure. So again I'll measure one and a half inches. And I've got my fold on that diagonal line so I know it's nice and straight. Marking it. And again, popping a pin in just to hold it in place. And then I'll take my lining and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to open it up. Create that kind of box shape. 
and when it's just roughly in a box shape flipping it over so we can get to a corner now that one's sitting nicely for me we can just pull at it a bit to make sure it is all sitting nicely we don't want any folds or anything under there it doesn't matter which way your seam is facing taking my ruler measuring one and a half inches draw my line and pin it and then I'll do exactly the same on the other side okay now let's sew along those lines we just drew so now just starting right before the edge and sewing along that line and I will do a back stitch at the beginning and the end and I'll repeat this for all four corners So now on all four corners we're going to cut off this excess fabric here and we want to cut it about quarter of an inch away from our stitches. You could use your ruler and mat but I'm just going to do it by eye with my fabric scissors here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just don't get too close to your stitches. okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to just turn our lining and we know it's our lining because we chose the fabric but also because we have the opening so we're just going to turn that right sides out just like that and then we're going to take our outer fabric and we're going to place our lining inside lining up all the edges so I'll just pop that in there and the easiest thing to do is just to push it down in those four corners just to start off with and then what we're going to do is come up to the ears so I'm going to find the ears here and what we're going to do is open up those seams and line them up and then we're going to nest them so that means we're going to push one set of seams one way and one set of seams the other way and then we're going to open it up and then when we've done that we've got this side folded over this way this side folded over this way we're going to push them right up together and butt them I've got a video on nesting seams I'll put a link below and then I what I do is I line it up I feel that it's all lined up nicely but then I also just open it up and check that if I open it up that seam there is going straight along and almost carrying on onto that seam there and that means it's nice and straight so once you're happy just pop a pin in at the top of the ears there it doesn't have to be perfect this is more of a craft project than a than a sewing or a quilting project then I'll find the other set of ears and I'll do exactly the same I'll push one set of seams one way the other another open it up butt them up together and then open them up and check they're nicely lined up got some loose threads there just ignore them or trim them if they're annoying you and when you're happy also making sure the top edge here is also lined up you wouldn't want this let's say you're out of fabric hanging over that way because then it's not going to line up all nicely so bringing that up lining up that top edge as well as nesting our seams and then pinning okay and then what we're going to do is come down into the center and find the bottom of the ears or that V and then again we're going to I'm going to make sure that that V is all nicely lined up and then I'm going to place a pin in on either side you kind of crisscross there but now I know that's nice and secure on that V I'll find my second V And then I'll do exactly the same. I'm lining up these edges and the V. When I'm happy, I'm popping a pin in. Now this is a little bit fiddly. And you will need to use pins or you're going to end up in a right royal pickle. Okay, so you can see my V's all lined up really nicely. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along to the rest of the ear, just line up those edges and I will just pop in one more pin. And I'll do that on all four sides. Now I can see that that's coming over a bit so I'm just going to take that pin out and double check everything was looking quite straight and good and double checking that's okay I'm lifting that up a little bit higher so it's lining up nicely okay that looks a little bit better okay so I've done all four sides including the V and the top of the ears now let's sew that so now we can start anywhere we don't have to worry about it leaving an opening um, so I'm just going to start down one of the sides of my ears here and again with my quarter inch seam allowance I'm just going to sew around the whole edge I'm not going to worry about back stitch because I'm going to come back around over and sew over the top of it now when I get to one of my V's I'm going to make sure that it's all sitting really nicely and sitting so it's laying flat so I can see the V. Can you see how I can see the V? So now I'm just going to carry on and I am going past the V and then when I think I'm probably about in line with the V I'll stop, make sure my needles down lift, my foot up and turn and now I'm going to carry on. So when I come up to a corner, I'm going to make sure that those seams are sitting down the way that they're facing when I come to sew over them. And I'm going to sew up to my stitch line. And then when I get to my stitch line, I'm going to stop, make sure my needle's down, lift my foot up and pivot all the way around. So then I can carry on down the next side. Coming back to that V and again getting it to sit like it's a V. Again stitching right up to my stitches on my on my seam there, turning when I get to them with my needle down. Oh I probably could have gone up one more stitch there and then I'm coming back down to where I started and I will do a back stitch. You might like to trim any loose threads now just to keep it tidy. So now on my corners I'm just going to trim off the excess and I'm going to trim it off on both sides just so I can get it really nice and close. But just be careful not to accidentally cut your stitches. Okay and then where we've got our V here I'm just going to trim down just a little bit away from the stitches don't go too close to the stitches that's just to give it a bit of a give when we're turning it right sides out okay so now let's find our opening and turn it all right sides out okay and it can be a bit confusing to work out what on earth's going on um, the easiest thing to do is to find the ears. So just pulling it out the best you can and getting it in about the right shape. Then what we're going to do is just get a point turner or something similar. And I'm just going to find my opening and fix those ears up. Pushing them out so they're sitting really nicely. Um, just be careful you don't push too hard because you can accidentally go all the way through your fabric and make a hole and we don't want to do that. Okay, and then you can just run it down the seams, your point turner, just so that it's sitting nicely and it's all rolled out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to find that opening. Now if you wanted to you could press it, I'm, I'm really not going to worry about it because like I said this is more of a craft project but you could press it 
you'd press it so it's all folded in nicely with the fabric inside about a quarter of an inch in, creating a nice straight line here, and then you'd press that. I'm not going to worry, I'm just going to give it a finger press. Oh. And then I will pop a pin in. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop a pin in where it starts and where it ends just so I know where to sew and what we're going to do is we're just going to sew along there really close to the edge just closing up our opening. So now just starting before that first pin I'm going to stitch really close to the edge probably oh it's, I'm too lazy to change my foot because this is a craft project but you probably want it to be about one eighth of an inch seam allowance just nice and close to the edge so we're closing up that opening. I will do a back stitch. And then I'm just going to come past my pin. Um, and that's probably about right, closing up that opening. I'll do a back stitch. And cut my thread. Okay, so that's just closed up our opening. You can trim any loose threads. And now we're going to give it a quick press. So what we're going to do now is just press it around the whole edge of the ears. So what I will do is I will roll them out, making sure that they're not all sort of sitting funny, like if that seam was stuck in there, I'm not pressing it like that. I'm just rolling it out so it's sitting really nicely. And then when I'm happy, I'll give it a press. And then I'll just go around and do that to the whole edge of the ears. If you're enjoying this tutorial and finding it helpful, please hit the like button. It just means the algorithm will share it with more people and I'd really appreciate it. Okay, if you want to, you could give the seams a bit of a press just so it's sitting really nicely. Alright, that's looking really cute. Let's fill it up with some goodies and tie a bow. So now I'm going to fill up my bag with some goodies. I've got a little teddy bear bunny thing here that I'm going to pop in, which I thought was super cute. And I've got some cream eggs, which are my favourite. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you can only buy them at Easter time. So it's a nice little treat bag. Then what we're going to do is just tie it closed with a bow. So I'm going to just take my ribbon, place it up the top there. Now this bit can be a bit fiddly. Whoop, I've got a runaway cream egg. I'm just going to work out approximately how long I need it and then I will fix it up. So I'll cut that a bit longer. Okay. So let me pop that runaway cream egg back in. So just tying it down at the base of the ears and getting those ears sitting how you'd like them. So I'd like mine to be really prominent there like that. Okay. So we kind of need the bow right at the bottom of the ears. So once you're happy with how it's sitting, I think that looks kind of cute. Then I'll just pull my bow in and tie it. And then we can puff it out a bit. Okay, trim it to how you'd like it. And then again, just puffing out those ears and getting them sitting how you want. And then we've got our cute little bunny ear bag. Now these bunny ear treat bags are super cute for Easter and you can pop in all sorts of goodies in there, whatever you've got on hand, and make them in whatever size you'd like to. You can find different sizes over on my website. There'll be a link down below. And I thought that'd also be wonderful for, let's say, parties for your party favours or your loot bag. Maybe you're having a woodland party or a Beatrix Potter party. That'd also be wonderful for that. They're just not limited to Easter time. I hope you enjoyed this project, but if you're looking for something else a little bit different to pop your Easter goodies in, you might like this video where I show you how to make a reversible fabric box. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.